Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, tell him thank you. Truly, he is worthy. Yeah, 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 he is worthy yeah, yeah. to be praised. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. To the angel of this house, Pastor Davis, Sister Davis in their absence, I count it a blessing as well as a privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We're so grateful that New Covenant and New Beginning have come together to worship God on today. The Bible says that God is a spirit. Yes, he is. And he that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And the true worshipers All right. don't need a church building Come on. to worship him. The true worshipers don't need a choir to worship you. The true worshipers don't need a blessing from God to worship you. Why? Because if he doesn't do anything else, he's already done enough. Amen, amen, amen. I would that you would go to the scripture with me on this morning. We're going to be uh, preaching from the Gospel of John, chapter 4. We're going to start reading from verses 6. We're going to skip around a little bit. We're going to pick up uh, verse uh, 12, 14. And we're going to conclude at verses 28, 29, and 30. If you have it, will you stand for the reading of the word of God? And it reads, Now Jacob wailed was there. Jesus, wherefore being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, asked, drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samarians. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me drink, thou would have gave they would have asked of me, 
and he would have given thee living water. I want to go over to verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. I want to go over to verse 28 and concluded verse 30. The woman then left her water pot and went her own way into the city and said unto the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. God bless the reading of his word. I would like to talk to you this morning. You may be seated. From this thought, an encounter with God. An encounter with God. When we look at the word encounter, it means that we experience something that was unexpected. Sometime when we drive our cars, we may encounter a flat tire because it was not expected. In life, sometime with our loved ones, we may find ourselves to where we may encounter a situation with them out of their character. Because the actions in which that they had made was the opposite of what we ever would think that they would do. But even though it's an unexpected encounter, we find that we still have a connection with the individual. We have a connection with the individual. So life deals us many incountable things. Things happen on the regular, if you will, to us that we could never imagine. But yet we find a way to continue on in life. We don't allow an unexpected encounter to stop us. But there are some encounters that we may have that will change us. The Gospel of John is not one of the synoptic Gospels simply because God, John speaks about Jesus as being God in the flesh. What the other three Gospels focus on, his ministry on earth. John want us to realize that Jesus was all God as well as being all man. And because he was God, he could do the very same things that God could do even though he was in the flesh. Sometimes we disconnect God from being human because we look at the spiritual. And we fail to realize that he also works in the natural. He also works in the natural because he is a spirit. And he has an indwelling spirit on the inside of us. And though we are the natural man because we have the spirit of God in us, God works 
through us for his purpose. He works through us for his purpose. Thus brings us to our text this morning. We find Jesus in his fleshly form as being a man, as being God's only begotten son, we find him in a place that we are, are used to as being fatigued. He had been on a journey, and his disciples was not with him. And he walked. They didn't have cars. They walked everywhere that they went. And even though he was about the business of God, because he was in a natural body, he felt fatigue. He was in a place to where he needed to have a drink of water. Now we have to look at this water. See, water represents life. If you don't believe it, get dehydrated. You start cramping in your legs. Get dehydrated. Your head will get a little lightheaded. Get dehydrated. And those that get dehydrated cannot sweat because there's no water in them, so they have no sweat in them to sweat out simply because they are dehydrated. And he finds himself at Jacob's well. It was commonplace to see Jacob's well because Jacob was a well digger. And everywhere that you went, there was a well that Jacob had dug. Jesus finds himself resting at the well, resting at the place that gives life, resting at a place that had to answer to his thirst. But do you not know that God allows things to happen to us to glorify God? A lot of times we think that he does things because he loves us, and he does, but the things that he do is to glorify God through us. It was about the sixth hour, and we find here that there is a woman from Samaria. And let me tell you about the Samarians. The Samarian people were looked down at from the Jewish perspective. Samaritans were half-breed people. They were people that even the Jews themselves believed that they were not good for anything. We find in Scripture that even if a Jew and a Samaritan was coming in contact, the Jew would walk on the opposite side of the streets. And we thought that prejudice only came about in our lifetime. But prejudice has been here for a very long time. Discrimination has been around for a very long time and those that we don't like, those that we don't understand, those that we disagree with, we have a tendency to distance ourselves. I'm so glad that God didn't distance himself from us. And she comes to the well. And Jesus asked the very simple Humane question. Would thou give me a drink? Would thou give me a drink? It wasn't about who you was, but it was about the thirst 
that I had. It was a humanitarian question that anybody could have asked if they cared about humanity. And he simply asked for a drink. And her response was, I have nothing to draw with. And secondly, I am a Samaritan. And the Jews have no dealings with us. Let me push pause for a minute. Because in her response, her response to Jesus slash God is the same response that we give him all of the time. How many times have God asked you to do something and your response was, but I don't have what I need in order for you to use me in that service. He put a, heart, a song in your heart, but you said, I'm not a song. Pastor asked you, would you like to be an usher? And you say, but I've never been trained. pastor says that I've been watching you and I believe that you would make a good deacon. But you say that job is just too honorable for me. We have a tendency to point out what we don't have when God is just saying, just say yes. We must realize that he know our shortcomings. He know what we do not have. He know that the gifts that we have in us, he know what we cannot do as well as what we can do. But watch this. He asked us something that he, we cannot do so we can lead into him so he can show us how to do it through his strength. Yes. Said, I don't have nothing to draw with. And I'm a Samaria. And you are a Jew. So that tells me she recognized who she was talking to. But Jesus' response was this. If you would have asked me, I would have gave you what you asked for. But you don't realize, you don't know who you're talking to. We like to use that term when we mad. Wait a minute. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who you're messing with. You don't know what you're asking for. You don't know what you're finna get yourself into. But Jesus had something greater in mind. Says here, if you would have asked of me, I would have gave you drink. But the drink that I would have gave you once you have drank it, you would never thirst. Again, because one thing about it, when you drink of the natural water, guess what? You're going to get thirsty again. When you drink of the natural water, it's going to quench your thirst at that particular time. But keep on living, keep on working, you're going to need another drink. Again. Said, but this water that I would have given you, you would never thirst again. She hadn't got the message yet. Sometimes, sister, we talk to God and we don't realize who we're talking to. 
So she says to him, so are you greater than our father Jacob that dug wells? How come when God talked to us in the spiritual, we stay in the natural? We run what he says through the make sense test. And if it don't make sense, guess what? We ain't doing it. But it don't have to make sense. The day that you hear my voice, hard not your heart. day that you hear my voice, just say, yes, Lord. day you hear my voice, Lord, I surrender. The day that I hear your voice, what I to say is, Lord, here I am. Use me for thy service. He says here in the text, and what's interesting to me is the fact that she had this conversation and encounter and did not realize that she was speaking to God. She didn't realize who it was that she was talking to. And he was trying to bless her. Watch this. But she wasn't ready to be blessed. Sometimes God is trying to bless us. But we're not ready to be blessed. Bible teach us obedience is better than sacrifice. And we want to understand before we do. But the Bible teaches us to walk by faith and not by sight. Not by how we feel and not by what it looked like, not by what somebody said, but what does says the Lord. Jesus took the time to explain to her about this water Mm -hmm. that he would have given her. And he wasn't talking about a natural water. He was talking about a spiritual water because he said, this water that I would have given you, you would never thirst again because it was a well that would spring up on the inside of you. In other words, I'm going to give you some life and, and some life more abundantly. I'm going to give you eternal life because that's what he was all about. This water that I give you, you would never thirst. You would never thirst again. I got to move on here. Then he got down into our, her personal business. He had to let her know that he knew where she lived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We get upset when folks start asking questions about our personal business. Folk want counsel but don't want the counselor to ask them about their personal business. They want, it to, they want you to fix it, but they don't want to own up to their personal business. But God knows our personal business, and yet he still offers her water. He still offers her living water. Then they got personal, and he asked the question about her husband. We talking about water and wells and springing up, living water. You never thirst again. To where's your husband? (laughs) 
Now he's going to take the litmus test. Let's see how truthful you are. You done called me a prophet. You done talked about Jacob's well. You told me why you couldn't give me any water. You told me you was a Samaritan. But tell me where is your She says, I don't have one. Jesus said, correct, you do not have one. You had five. The one that you wed is not yours. She almost answered it correct, which equals you almost told the truth. But we got to remember, God knows everything. The Bible reminds me of the fact that in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So even when you're lying to him, he still died for you. Even when you try to take up for yourself, God was making provisions for you to have a relationship with him. Yeah, Say so you're right, the one that you was with. You had five of them. You were number six. And he ain't yours. Yeah, you answered right. This is correct, and I, 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 I moved on because I didn't want to read the whole story. You can read that on your, on your own time. But we find out that she had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Verse 28 says, and the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city. And said unto the men, come see a man. Which told me all things that ever I did. Is this not the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. She left her pots. Because she had experienced some living water that the pots could no longer hold. She had had an encounter that changed her life. She wanted to go tell all the other men about this man named Jesus. You can't come in contact with him. And not tell somebody else about him. He can't bless you. And you can't tell somebody about his blessings. He can't heal you. And you not tell him about how he healed you. In spite of what you may have been. We got to realize something. We are all exes in here. Ex-liars, ex-jamblers, ex-cheaters, ex-homeowners, ex doughhead ex We are all exes here. But God loved us so much. In spite of us, he saved us. He picked us up. He turned us around. He placed our feet on solid ground. Aren't you glad about it? I got good news for you. It don't matter who you are. Don't matter where you been. It don't matter where you were. Jesus died. Didn't he die? Jesus died from the sixth to the ninth hour. Jesus died. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand 
And because he got up, you can get up today. You can get up today. I don't care where you're laying. I don't care where you're being. I don't care what you've been doing. You can get up today because it's power in the name of Jesus. It's healing in the name of Jesus. It's deliverance in the name of Jesus. It's healing in the name of Jesus. All he want to know is do you want to drink of this living water? This water that if you drink of it, you'll never thirst again. This water, when you're in trouble, it'll spring up in you. This water, when things are not going right, it'll encourage you. This water, when you're feeling low, it'll pick you up. This water will give you strength to face tomorrow. This water will keep you in your darkest hour. This water. I would have given you water that you wouldn't thirst again. She had a testimony. Come see a man that told me everything. I told him a little something, but he told me everything. I started the sentence, but he wrote the paragraph because he told me everything. I'm closing. We got to realize something. There's nothing that's hid from God. You, you, you know what the old saints used to tell us? They used to say, he's looking and he's booking. He's looking and he's booking. But I got good news for you. You can change the narrative of what he's writing just by surrendering your life to him. Jesus was there for that one purpose and that was to speak to the woman of Samaria. Let me share something with you. He cares so much about us that he does things independently just for us. Sometimes you go through things not for you but it's for somebody else. It's not for you, but it's to bring glory to his name. It's not for you, but it's for you to be a testimony to somebody else that don't know God and don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. He uses you because you are a vessel of the Lord. And the way that he touched people is through you. The only way the world will feel the love of God is going to be through you. It's going to be through you. And after she had had this encounter, she said, come see a man. That means that she's been changed. No shame. He told me about everything that I ever done. Come see him. And they believed it because they saw the change that was made in her life. Can the sinner see the change? that have been made in your life since you've made Christ Lord of your life. She became a living testimony 
She was the one to say, come see a man. Y'all come on, go with me. I know, come follow me. You've been following me home. You've been following me everywhere else. Come follow me now. I want to take you to a man that can tell you all about your troubles. Tell you all about your life. Tell you all about everything that you've done. And he's not there to condemn you. He's there to set you free. There might be one that don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sin. There might be one that want to drink of this living water. That's a well that would spring up unto salvation. If there's one, would you come at this time? Would you come? While the blood is running warm in your vein. We have to realize something. All of us are on death row. People are here today and they gone today. Amen. But Jesus said that I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. If there's one, if not, let us pray. Father God, we thank you today for the word that have gone forth to this your people that have heard your word. And Lord, we ask that you look upon us, O oh God, and touch us in the name of Jesus. Lord, draw us closer to you, O oh God. Lord, give us a drink of that living water, that well that, that never run dry, O oh God. Lord, help us, O oh God, to realize that you are right there, right there in the midst of the storm, right there when things are going well, right there when things are not well, right there when we are sick. You are right there, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we ask that you touch the hearts of your people, oh God. There might be one that's in the valley of decision that are even afraid to walk up and say, I want to make Jesus my choice. We ask that you touch their hearts, oh God, and draw them closer to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray now. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you today. May God keep you is our prayer. It is now offering time. It's offering time. Those of you that